So by now, this is old news, and I think a lot of people have moved on from the Joe Rogan, Bernie Sanders story, but I wanted to weigh in, and I wanted to take a couple of days to really, like, mull this situation over and reflect on it, um, because it's not necessary for me to respond to every single thing that happens as it happens. Sometimes I just want to take some time to think things through. So for those of you who don't know, if you've been living under a rock, uh, Joe Rogan kind of tacitly... Um, kind of endorsed Bernie Sanders and said in a recent interview uh, or podcast with Barry Weiss that he'd probably vote for Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders then tweeted out Joe Rogan complimenting him for being consistent throughout the years. And um, that was that, right? Well, no, the establishment uh, decided to attack Bernie Sanders because he elevated someone who has made problematic comments in the past. Now, what's interesting to me, first and foremost, is that the people who are uh, speaking out are supporters of Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Joe Biden, all tried to get on Joe Rogan's podcast themselves and would have likely done the same thing to elevate this endorsement. Um, But on top of that, it just it really shows to you that the Democratic Party establishment and their loyalists, they don't really give a shit about these issues, these woke issues, for lack of a better word, that affect our lives, right? I had a really long talk with Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk on Progressive Voices channel. I'll link to that down below where we talked about this issue. I talked about the issues that I had with Joe Rogan platforming right-wingers and the misinformation that they spread about trans people and Joe Rogan's attacks on trans people. So I'm not going to defend Joe Rogan's comments that he made, but I will say this, as someone who is you know, a representative of the political center in America. Joe Rogan is someone who I think is rational and smart enough to genuinely be convinced. Like, I'm a member of the LGBTQ community, and the comments that Joe Rogan makes about trans people, they really, really bother me. They genuinely do. But a lot of people are making these same arguments. And what I say to that is, let's convince them. Let's change their minds. Because the people who are making really ignorant comments about gay rights, saying, you know, things like, oh, well, every sin is equal, so don't judge, trying to be an ally, but calling, you know, gay people sinners. I mean, we had to correct them, and I think that we've won them over, and I think that people like Joe Biden, or Joe Rogan, who are in that political center, they can be won over. They just have to talk with people and engage with people in the trans community. So, like, I don't think he's too far gone, but here's what really, what really affected me the most in this story was the hypocrisy. It was trying to capitalize on the trans issue and trans rights. That really bugged me um, because it felt so vapid. It felt so disingenuous and hollow. So, for example, Joe Biden, who tried to get on Joe Rogan's podcast himself, or at least his team did, tweeted out support for trans people. Now, look, I'll take it. I want you to tweet support for trans people. But here's the thing. I don't want you to just, like, comment trans rights. Like, I want you to genuinely believe in trans rights from your gut. Like, I want you to believe it in your heart of hearts. But I think that the establishment just showed that they don't give a fuck about trans rights or the LGBTQ community. And I say that because lately I've been speaking out about Hillary Clinton's comments. She is basically a turf. She made comments where she essentially said that cis women are threatened by trans women, something like that. I'm I'm paraphrasing, right? Now, here's my thing. I take issue with Joe Rogan and what he said about trans people and Hillary Clinton. Both, I think, can be convinced on this issue. Both, I think, are gettable. But what irritates me is that the people who are berating Joe Rogan here embrace Hillary Clinton with open arms, said nothing about Hillary Clinton's brazenly transphobic comments. Now again, Joe Rogan and Hillary Clinton have said things about trans people that I do not like. With that being said, why is there selective outrage? I'll tell you why. It's because this is an effort to get Bernie Sanders to disavow Joe Rogan's endorsement because they know that this can help Bernie Sanders. Like, Joe Rogan has a massive audience, the largest podcast in America. So if Bernie Sanders says, you know what, I don't want your endorsement, That's going to turn off all of Joe Rogan's uh, viewers who may be inclined to support Bernie Sanders, who Bernie may have convinced after he went on Joe Rogan's podcast. So this is politically calculated, and that's why I feel so hurt by this. The establishment, who I kind of suspected didn't really care about LGBTQ issues and these woke issues, they're revealing that they're only using trans people and LGBTQ people as a political tool. 
They're using us. They're using us to basically defeat Bernie Sanders, who has the strongest record on trans rights and has the best platform on trans issues. Now, Bernie's not perfect, but Medicare for All, which would make healthcare free at the point of service for trans people, would be a game changer for trans people. Now, he has work to do. All of the candidates have work to do. Um, I think that Bernie needs to commit to decriminalizing sex work because that is an issue that affects LGBTQ people, namely trans people, namely trans women of color. So he's got to do better, but by far and away, Bernie's policies would have the most profound effect on trans people. But they don't care about that. They won't acknowledge that. They just want to defeat Bernie Sanders. So that's why it feels so like hurtful because I'm getting flashbacks to the days like in 2010 when I just came out and I was really relying on the Democratic Party to be LGBTQ allies. And I was hurt by the fact that Obama was elected and didn't support gay marriage until he was running for re-election. And it irritated me that nobody would respond to that. Nobody seemed to care that we have a president who is supposedly progressive who thinks we should be second-class citizens. And then when we wanted Democrats to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, I remember watching the TYT segment where they talked about how Democrats were possibly buckling, and it just felt, man, their support for us is hollow. It doesn't feel like they genuinely give a shit about us. They put up gay flags just to get us to vote for them, and then when push comes to shove, they abandon us when it's politically expedient. Now, that's not to say that, you know, they... Uh, have always failed us, right? They ended up voting to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, for example. But I'm getting that feeling again where it feels like their support for us is asymmetric, where, you know, we're expected to support Democrats and they're not really going to be there for us. And I say us because even though I'm not trans, I feel like as part of the community, we all have to like stick up for each other. And just to see this hollow support, it's not that surprising, but it really is like to get explicit examples of them trying to use the trans issue just to beat Bernie. Oh, it just, you know, it kind of clicks. They don't actually give a fuck about us, the LGBTQ community and trans people. They're just using it to try to beat Bernie. Okay. I mean, Joe Biden who just touted, you know, his support for segregationist senators, who voted for DOMA, all of a sudden gets more woke points than Bernie Sanders because at the right time, at this convenient time politically, he said something positive about trans rights. It just all feels so fake. And the Democratic establishment, like, it's a house of cards that is collapsing before our very eyes because this is exposing people. They're kind of self-exposing as the frauds that they are. They're simply using these issues because Bernie is to the left of them. And in a primary, you know, being to the left of other candidates benefits you, right? So they have nothing economically. They're not leftists. So they try to run on social issues and that's all that they've got. But when push comes to shove, they sh they've shown that they're cowards, they're only willing to speak out on gay and trans issues and whatnot when it's convenient for them. And that really is hurtful. Like, I, I saw comments from trans people who are saying, don't, like, be outraged for me. Like, listen to me, right? I saw trans people say, I support Bernie. I don't like Joe Rogan, but at the same time, we need to win this election. And he has a huge audience. We'd be idiots to have Bernie disavow this endorsement. So, I mean, this is just me kind of, like giving you my personal take, which probably won't be helpful, but I think that it's important that, you know, as a member of the LGBTQ community, I speak out and share my perspective because, you know, the establishment likes to pretend like Bernie's base is just full of, you know, white bros, but no, this is a really diverse coalition of people, including many LGBTQ people. And uh, one poll that was taken shows that Bernie has the second highest rate of supporters in the LGBTQ community. Elizabeth Warren was at number one, but Bernie Sanders was at number two. And if the establishment didn't try to pretend like he was bad on these issues, on social issues, then Bernie would probably be in number one. But it just, like, overall, what this tells me is that the establishment's support for gay issues and trans issues is little more than lip service.